Old Sultan A farmer once had a faithful dog called Sultan, who had grown old and lost all his teeth so that he could no longer bite. One day the farmer was standing with his wife before the house door and said, Tomorrow I intend to shoot Old Sultan, he is no longer of any use. His wife, who felt pity for the faithful beast, answered, He has served us so long and been so faithful that we might well keep him. Eh? What? said the man. You are not very sharp. He has not a tooth left in his mouth and no thief is afraid of him, now he may be off. If he has served us, he has had good feeding for it. The poor dog, who was lying stretched out in the sun not far off, had heard everything, and was sorry that the morrow was to be his last day. He had a good friend, the wolf, and he crept out in the evening into the forest to him, and complained of the fate that awaited him. Listen well, said the wolf, and don't be sad. I will help you out of your trouble. I have thought of something. Tomorrow, early in the morning, your master is going with his wife to make hay, and they will take their little child with them, for no one will be left behind in the house. As usual, during work time, they will lay the child under the hedge in the shade, you lie there too, just as if you wished to guard it. Then I will come out of the wood and carry off the child. You must rush swiftly after me. I will let it fall, and you will take it back to its parents, who will think that you have saved it, and will be far too grateful to do you any harm, quite the opposite, you will dear to their hearts, and they will never let you lack for anything again. The plan pleased the dog, and it was carried out just as it was arranged. The father screamed when he saw the wolf running across the field with his child, but when old Sultan brought it back, then he was full of joy and stroked him and said, Not a hair of yours shall be hurt, you shall eat my bread free as long as you live. And to his wife he said, Go home at once and make old Sultan some soggy bread that he will not have to bite, and bring the pillow out of my bed, I will give it to him to lie upon. From that time on, Old Sultan was as well off as he could wish to be. Soon afterwards the wolf visited him, and was pleased that everything had succeeded so well. But, listen well, said he, you will just wink an eye when I carry off one of your master's fat sheep. Do not reckon upon that, answered the dog, I will remain true to my master, I cannot agree to that. The wolf, who thought that this could not be spoken in earnest, came creeping about in the night and was going to take away the sheep. But faithful old Sultan barked, and the farmer chased after the wolf with a big stick. The wolf had to pack off, but he cried out to the dog, Wait a bit, you scoundrel, you shall pay for this. The next morning the wolf sent the wild boar to challenge the dog to come out into the forest so that they might settle the affair. Old Sultan could find no one to stand by him but a cat with only three legs, and as they went out together the poor cat limped along, and at the same time stretched out her tail into the air with pain. The wolf and his friend were already on the spot appointed, but when they saw their enemy coming they thought that he was bringing a saber with him, for they mistook the outstretched tail of the cat for one. And when the poor beast hopped on its three legs, they could only think every time that it was picking up a stone to throw at them. So they were both afraid, the wild boar crept into the underwood and the wolf jumped up a tree. The dog and the cat, when they came up, wondered that there was no one to be seen. The wild boar, however, had not been able to hide himself altogether, and one of his ears was still to be seen. Whilst the cat was looking carefully about, the boar moved his ear, the cat, who thought it was a mouse moving there, jumped upon it and bit it hard. The boar made a fearful noise and ran away, crying out, the guilty one is up in the tree. The dog and cat looked up and saw the wolf, who was ashamed of having proved himself to be so afraid, and made friends with the dog.